Hi, I'm Luna Craft from Psychic Truths, and I welcome you to my weekly Astro Tarot reading for the zodiac sign of Leo. I'll start by looking at the planetary aspects for your sign before drawing three tarot cards, which will be interpreted to give you guidance for the coming week. As this is a general reading for your sign, please only take what resonates with you. If you feel that this reading is not relevant, maybe consider watching the readings for your rising sign, moon sign, or Venus sign, or a combination of all three. As you may find those are more relevant and applicable for your current situation. So, I'll get straight to the overview of the planetary movements and the potential effects these could bring to your star sign, Leo. The list of trends for the coming week includes one conjunction not involving the moon, one opposition that does involve the moon, seven sextile, five of which involve the moon, four transits, four involving the moon. Did I say seven square? I don't think I did. Seven square, six of which involve the moon. And finally, seven trine, six involving the moon. In total, there are 27 aspects of which 22 involve the moon. And if you remember, it's the moon that triggers interactions between the planets and their host signs and astrological houses. So moving on to look at the highlights for this coming week. At the start of the week, the moon and Jupiter are at 60 degree angle, which is about as good as it gets, and it enables you to adopt a passive view of life, um, sorry, a positive view of life, and encourages the creation of elaborate plans. You're very likely to exercise sincere, generous, and unselfish acts you'll probably find yourself high on the list of popular people. Can't be bad. The following day could be somewhat challenging as Mars and Saturn go head to head. The main area of contention is that Mars wants to get things done immediately, whereas Saturn takes a more circumspect approach. The best way to proceed is to become involved in physical activity for a few days maybe and then objectively review and assess the challenges that await you. Moving forward, the sun and the moon are at a 60 degree angle which gives a situation where the male principle and the female principle are able to coexist harmoniously. As far as us mere mortals are concerned, you'll be treating everyone as equals. In turn, this will translate to a calm workplace without any dramas. It's probable that you'll experience helpful behaviours from friends and family. The moon moves into cancer, which brings you to a state of loving life and the bounty it offers. If you're away from home, you could well find yourself pining for the familiar and the security that home provides. This would be a perfect time for you to relax and recharge your energy. And yet another 60 degree angle, this time between Mercury and Mars. 
that gives you a positive mindset, that encourages mental sharpness, that is paired with strong skills based around practical and manual tasks. Your speaking skills will also be enhanced by the presence of Mercury. As the end of this week draws closer, the moon reaches its first quarter phase, meaning that light and dark are perfectly balanced. It marks the midpoint between the new and full moons. It's quite possible that difficulties within family settings, along with potential disagreements at work, could appear. Also be aware that there may be a tendency to develop health complaints. If that does apply to you, be sure to seek medical advice at the earliest opportunity. At the end of the week, Mercury and Pluto find themselves squaring up to bring the suggestion of conflict and tension. However, those are offset by the positive influences resulting from the partnership between Mercury and Mars. Do be aware that you could experience some disruption in the form of unpredictable and strong self-will of people around you. This behaviour could result in errors being made. Now it's time for me to draw three cards and have a look and see what messages they contain for you. So, just give them a, a good shuffle, make sure that there are no residual energies. That's fine. Split the pack. And card number one. Card number two. And card number three. Right. Let's see what we've got. Oh. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Okay. The first card to be revealed is the Six of Swords. That is all about moving forwards, leaving the past behind. It's nice to look back on the past, to re maybe relive memories, but make sure that you don't get stuck in the past because there's a whole lot of living to be done. There really is. That card also could be referring to a life stage, life phase, transition, which would tie in very closely with the second and third cards. The second card in the centre is the world. That is such a wonderful card. It's all about completion of tying up loose ends. It's about preparing for the next phase. And certainly you are always pushing yourself forwards. You're always looking to develop new things. And it's what contributes to making you a natural born leader. The final card is the chariot. Again, a really positive, happy card that shows that once you set your path, nothing is going to throw you off course. You have a tenacity about you. You will keep 
going until you get things exactly as you envisage them. It also tells of being balanced, getting, I believe, the work-life balance right for you. But it's also giving you the freedom to express yourself, your ideas, your hopes and dreams. And you'll be surprised at just how many people will share those with you and help you along the way. Hi, I'm Luna Craft from Psychic Truth, and I welcome you to my weekly Astro Tarot reading for the Zodiac Sign of Virgo. I'll start by looking at the planetary aspects for your sign before drawing three tarot cards which will be interpreted to give you guidance for the coming week. As this is a general reading for your sign, please only take what resonates and if you feel that this reading is not relevant, maybe consider watching the readings for your rising sign, moon sign or Venus sign or a combination of all of those, as you may find these more relevant and applicable for your current situation. So, I'll get straight to the overview of the planetary movements and the potential effects these could bring to your star sign Virgo. The list of trends for the coming week include one conjunction, not involving the moon, one opposition that does involve the moon, seven sextile, five involving the moon, seven square, six that involve the moon, four transits, all involving the moon, that includes moon phase changes as well, and seven trine, six involving the moon. So, in total, there are 27 aspects, of which 22 involve the moon. And it's the moon that triggers interactions between the planets and their host signs and astrological houses. The highlights for the coming week include, at the start of the week, the moon and Jupiter are at 60 degree angle, which is about as good as it gets, and it enables you to adopt a positive view of life and encourages the creation of elaborate plans. You're very likely to exercise sincere, generous and unselfish acts, and you'll probably find yourself high on the list of very popular people. The following day could be somewhat challenging, as Mars and Saturn go head to head. The main area of contention is that Mars wants to get everything done immediately, right now, whereas Saturn takes a more circumspect approach. The best way to proceed in this situation is to become involved in physical activity for a few days and then objectively review and assess the challenges that await you. Moving forward, the sun and the moon are at an angle of 60 degrees, which gives a situation where the male principle and the female principle are able to coexist harmoniously. As far as us mere mortals are concerned, you'll find you, you'll be treating everyone as equals. In turn, this will translate to a calm workplace without any dramas. And it's probable 
that you will experience helpful behaviours from friends and family. The moon moves into Cancer, which brings you to a state of loving life and the bounty it offers. If you are away from home, you could well find yourself pining for the familiar and the security provided by home. This would be a perfect time for you to relax and recharge your energy. And another 60 degree angle, this time formed by Mercury and Mars, giving you a positive mindset that encourages mental sharpness and that's paired with strong skills based around practical and manual tasks. Your speaking skills will also be enhanced by the presence of Mercury. As the end of this week draws closer, the moon reaches its first quarter phase, meaning that light and dark are perfectly balanced. It marks the midpoint between the new and full moons. It's quite possible that difficulties within family settings, along with potential disagreements at work, may erupt. Also, be aware that there may be a tendency to develop health complaints. And if you are affected, in that way, please be sure to seek medical advice at the earliest opportunity. At the end of the week, Mercury and Pluto find themselves squaring up to bring the suggestion of conflict and tension. However, those are offset by the positive influences resulting from the partnership between Mercury and Pluto. Do be aware that you could experience some disruption in the form of unpredictable and strong self-will of people around you. Also be aware that that behaviour could result in errors being made. And that brings me to the point where I draw three tarot cards. So bear with me while I just make sure that they are energy free. Yeah. Okay. Let's give them a good shuffle just to make sure. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So split the deck and Card number one, card number two, and oh, that one, card number three. They came out easy. Okay, let's turn them over, see what we've got. Oh, that's nice. So is that one. Oh, and that's brilliant. Okay, three super cards. Right. The first card to be revealed is the Four of Wands. And this is mainly to do with um, enjoying yourself, but in a contained way. So a formal setting, something like, I don't know, a... Uh, a party for a special occasion or a wedding reception, something of that sort. And although I wouldn't necessarily describe you as a party animal, it does allow you to ease your... Oh, ease any pent-up tensions that may have collected. In the middle, 
You've got the seven of pentacles and that is so perfect for you because it's reviewing what is going on. It's applying a systematic overview of all your situations. I always think of a farmer getting ready for harvest and checking the crops to make sure that they are ready for collection. So it's very analytical. It's very ordered. It's process oriented, which really is you down to a T. And the third card is the Three of Cups. And that card is all about letting off steam. Again, it's a way of relaxing, which you don't do that often. It's sharing good times with close family members, with close friends. It's necessary. So, get in there. Enjoy yourself. You will benefit as a result of that. Hi, I'm Luna Craft from Psychic Truth and I welcome you to my weekly Astro Tarot reading for the Zodiac sign of Libra. I'll start by looking at the planetary aspects for your sign before drawing three tarot cards, which will be interpreted to give you guidance for the coming week. As this is a general reading for your sign, please only take what resonates. And if you feel that this reading is not relevant, perhaps consider watching the readings for your rising sign, your moon sign, or your Venus sign, or indeed, a combination of all three. As you may find these to be more relevant and applicable for your current situation. So, I'll get straight to the overview of the planetary movements and the potential effects these could bring to your star sign Libra. The list of trends for the coming week include one conjunction not involving the moon, one opposition that does involve the moon, seven sextile, five involving the moon, seven square, six involving the moon, four transits and moon phase changes, all four involving the moon, and seven trine six of which involve the moon. In total, there are 27 aspects, of which 22 involve the moon. And if you remember, the moon triggers interactions between the planets and their host signs and astrological houses. The highlights for the coming week include, at the start of the week, the Moon and Jupiter form a 60 degree angle, which is about as good as it gets, and it enables you to adopt a positive view of life and encourages the creation of elaborate plans. You're very likely to exercise sincere generous and unselfish acts. Alongside all of that, you may well find yourself high on the list of people who are popular. The following day could be somewhat challenging for you as Mars and Saturn go ahead, go head to head. The main area of contention is that Mars wants to get everything done immediately, whereas Saturn takes a more circumspect approach. 
the best way to proceed is to become involved in physical activity. Only for a few days, and then to objectively review and assess the challenges that await you. Moving forward, the sun and the moon are, are at an angle of 60 degrees, which gives a situation where the male principle and the female principle are able to coexist harmoniously. As far as us mere mortals are concerned, you will be treating everyone as if they are your equals. In turn, this will translate to a calm workplace without any dramas. It's probable that you will experience helpful behaviours from friends and family. The moon moves into cancer, which brings you to a state of loving life and the bounty it offers. If you're away from home at this time, you could well find yourself pining for the familiar and the security that home gives you. This would be a perfect week for you to relax and recharge your energy. Another 60 degree angle, this time between Mercury and Mars, and it gives you a positive mindset that encourages mental sharpness, that is paired with strong skills based around practical and manual skills. Your speaking skills will also be enhanced by the presence of, the, of Mercury. As the end of this week draws closer, the moon reaches its first quarter phase, meaning that light and dark are perfectly balanced. It marks the midpoint between the new and full moons. It's quite possible that difficulties within family settings, as well as potential disagreements at work, may erupt. Also, be aware that there may be a tendency to develop health complaints. If that happens with you, please be sure to seek medical advice at the earliest opportunity. Then at the end of the week, Mercury and Pluto find, find themselves squaring up to bring the suggestion of conflict and tension. However, those are offset by the positive influences resulting from the partnership between Mercury and Mars. Do be aware that you could experience some disruption in the form of unpredictable and strong self-will of people around you. This behaviour could result in errors being made. That brings me to the point of drawing three tarot cards for you. And just giving them a good old shuffle to clear any energies that might be trapped in them. And they are a bit sticky, so let me just run some energy through them to clear them. And, oh yeah, that's worked. Beautiful. Right, let's cut the pack. And go for three cards. What are we going to get? That one. And that one. And, oh, ah, doesn't want to come out. Doesn't want to come and play. There we are. Three cards. Let's get them turned over and see what we've got. 
Oh, oh, very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, so Libra, your first card to be revealed is the Knight of Wands. This is all about high level energy. It doesn't sit too well with you, but there are times when we need that boost. And I believe this is one of those times. So don't fight it, accept it, feed off of it. It will help you in your striving to balance everything, to bring people together, to find compromise. And then your middle card is the sun. Again, not a generally good card for you, but it also relates back to the Knight of Wands in that the sun gives you energy. It also enables you to appreciate the good things in life, to see the beauty around you, to appreciate it with an artistic eye. I think that's an absolutely wonderful card. And then finally, you've got the Nine of Wands. And this is all about planning, reviewing, sharing your ideas and using your ideas to move things forward. So this is very much about making progress. All the cards are pointing to that for this week. Wow, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hi, I'm Lunacraft from Psychic Truth and I welcome you to my weekly Astro Tarot reading for the Zodiac Sign of Scorpio. I'll start by looking at the planetary aspects for your sign before drawing three tarot cards, which will be interpreted to give you guidance for the coming week. As this is a general reading for your sign, please only take what resonates, and if you feel that this reading is not relevant, maybe consider watching the readings for your rising sign, moon sign, or Venus signs, or a combination of those, as you may find those more relevant and applicable for your current situation. So, I'll get straight ahead to the overview of the planetary movements and the potential effects these could bring to your star sign, Scorpio. The list of trends for the coming week include one conjunction not involving the moon, one opposition involving the moon, seven sextile, five of which involve the moon, seven square, six involving the moon, and I've lost my place and my notes. Oh, there it is. Seven trying, six that involve the moon. In total, there are 27 aspects, of which 22 involve the moon. And if you remember, it's the moon that triggers the interactions between the planets and their host signs and astrological houses. Moving on to look at the highlights for the coming week, they include at the beginning of the week, the Moon and Jupiter are at a 60 degree angle, which is just about as 
good as it gets. And it enables you to adopt a positive view of life and encourages the creation of elaborate plans. You're very likely to exercise sincere, generous and unselfish acts. And you'll find yourself high on the list of popular people. The following day could be somewhat challenging for you as Mars and Saturn go head to head. The main area of contention is that Mars wants to get things done immediately, right now, whereas Saturn takes a more circumspect approach. The best way to proceed at this time is to become involved in physical activity so you can burn off that energy from Mars. Keep doing that for a few days and then take an objective review and assessment of the challenges that await you. Moving forward, the sun and the moon are at an angle of 60 degrees which gives a situation where the male principle and the female principle are able to coexist harmoniously. As far as us mere mortals are concerned, you'll be treating everyone as equals. In turn, this will translate to a calm workplace without any dramas. It's probable that you will experience helpful behaviours from friends and family. The moon moves into Cancer, which brings you to a state of loving life and the bounty it offers. If you're away from home at this time, you could well find yourself pining for the familiar and security that home provides. This would be a perfect time for you to relax and recharge your energy. Another 60 degree angle, this time between Mercury and Mars, gives you a positive mindset that encourages mental sharpness that is paired with strong skills based around practical and manual tasks. Your speaking skills will also be enhanced by the presence of Mercury. As the end of this week draws close, closer, the moon reaches its first quarter phase, meaning that light and dark are perfectly balanced. It marks the midpoint between the new and full moons. It's quite possible that difficulties within family settings, along with potential disagreement at work, may well arise. Also, be aware that there may be a tendency to develop health complaints. If that does apply, then please be sure to seek medical advice at the earliest opportunity. At the end of the week, Mercury and Pluto find themselves squaring up to bring the suggestion of conflict and tension. However, these are offset by the positive influences resulting from the partnership between Mercury and Mars. Do be aware that you could experience some disruption in the form of unpredictable behaviour and strong self-will of people around you. This behaviour could result in errors being made. Now it's time for me to draw three tarot cards and see what messages they hold for you. I'm just holding them now just to run some pure energy into them. Just to make sure they're completely clear. 
That feels all right. Let's give him a shuffle. And we'll see. Oh, yes. Oh, they're nice. Okay. More shuffling. I realise I've got them upside down, so that's no good. There we go. That's a nice shuffle. And cut deck. And there's number one. There's card number two. Why are you trying to come out in pairs? Stop it. <laughs> that one. Right, let's turn these over, see what we've got. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, so, Scorpio, your first card is temperance. And that's all about being prepared to take risks, calculated risks, not just leaping out of an aeroplane without a parachute. It means considering all the options, all the potential outcomes, and then making a, a sound decision. It's a sign also that... Um, Still keep options open. Don't close anything down until that decision is made. But you are actually being protected by, mm, however you want to term it, the divine, the great source, the angels, God, spirit guides, whoever. So be prepared for that. Your second card, the one in the middle, is the two of wands. And to me, that says very clearly that the world is your oyster. You can do anything that you want to do. The only thing that will hold you back is yourself. By following the advice of the temperance card and of the forward-looking nature of the middle card, it will give you things to work towards. It will give you a focus. And that focus will also help you to achieve your long-term goals. And finally, you've got the Ten of Wands. Bit of a a worrying card in some ways because it probably feels as if you've been trying to push a bucket of water up a hill without a bucket. Things have been pretty tough, but you've persisted. You've exercised determination and that is paying off. The difficulties are coming to an end. Things will get ever so much easier to negotiate. So, all in all, not bad cards. But, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this week's ta Astro Tarot reading for Scorpio. Thank you for joining me and for listening to the information the planets and the cards have given. As I said right at the beginning, please 
only take what resonates. And if you feel that this reading has not been relevant, maybe consider watching the readings for your rising sign, moon sign, or Venus signs, or all three, as you may find those more relevant for your current situation. When I think about it, you'll be very welcome to join me for my live mini tarot readings that I do every Wednesday from 9am BST. I remember the clock's changed. It's actually building to be a lovely group, mainly drawn from Facebook and YouTube. Come along, submit a question and see how it all works. You might be the lucky one to have your question chosen. That is done at random, by the way. Anyway, I wish you all the best and hope you have a wonderful week. And if you'd like to join me again next week, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be back again next week with more Astro Tarot readings. But for now, bye bye.